There you go. <laughs> you got to do that where it's like, okay, America gives you Eddie Murphy, but you got to give us Jim Carrey and like 10 other people. <laughs> and we'll, we'll keep Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, we, exactly. Yeah. We get to keep yeah. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. He's an yeah. American citizen now. He can yeah. vote. Yeah, yeah. He's ours. You can't have him. Oh, man. There's so many Canadians. I am freaking. I really, I, I got, there was a point where I got so sick of Justin Bieber and I was like, he needs to go back and people got to stop letting him in. When he was getting in trouble all the time, I was like, yo, deport him. Why is it no one calling like fucking, uh, you know, that shit where they come and get the Latinos and everything. Why not the Canadians? <laughs> Call Ice on his <laughs> Call Ice on him. Get him out of here. Get this motherfucker out of here. He's damaging shit. <clears throat> He's a crazy one, dude. Yeah. But you know, the celebrities. He died out though. He's not like a Kardashian where they got where no one pays attention and they gotta do something. Yeah, get. yeah. He he's yeah, he got into some weird stuff. It'd be like, you know, uh him and like twelve year old girls. He's like in the bed with like three twelve year old girls in yeah. like South America. It's like the fuck? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he he was on Epstein Island. <laughs> Dude, what's up with the the Z Network post keep saying live show Batman and Robin? Yeah, no, Aaron, you messed that up again, man. No. I did not. And what's up with this alpha shit? Is this a, did you change the name? I seen I saw it said the Z Network Alpha. No, that's the page, not the group. Oh, okay. I was really confused. I was like, what the fuck? Are they updating the name? No one let me know. Well, oh, hey. I forgot to question. The Batman and Nips. You keep putting the uh the post comes out and says, Oh, this week live. Batman Bat- and Robin, aka Bat Nips. I don't know. <laughs> Restream, fix it. Restream, fix it. Stop posting the wrong shit. Really quick, guys. I have to put these on for a reason. You'll you'll understand in a minute. So what's everybody drinking tonight, guys? Well, I'm born, so I'll start off. I got the the H2O. H2O. You know, I said fancy. I said I said science like. Going with some crushed golden lager from Brown's Brewing in Troy, New York. Uh, it's probably not the first time I've had it on this podcast. Probably not the last time because it's delicious, and I just have a lot of it. <laughs> I'm wrong with that. I always, you know, I got I got my nog, my eggnog. That's go. what I'm. That's what I'm doing today. It I is win. the day after Christmas. Oh, happy Kwanzaa! Yeah. Kwanzaa. I ran out of nog. See what the fuck I got today? This is why I got these motherfucking shades. Uh, is it more SoCo? No. Uh, he think he found something new. It's not Snoop Dogg this time. What do you find? Yeah, right. Bam. What the fuck is I can't see what that says. What is that, sweet bitch? What is that? Sure. Does it really say sweet bitch? Sweet bitch. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Never heard that ever. Where do you find this stuff? Um... Is people make is it people making out of their toilet bowls? No. On um is it the, the one is it the Watt Street? Yeah. What the wine that? and liquor? Or um Wow used to be. Yeah, I forgot the store's called though. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did, did you put on your uh shades there just to show your bottle of sweet bitch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to. Those in the cards. What ca- is is that wine? Yeah. It's called sweet bitch because you drink too much, you become someone else's bitch. I'm 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 classy now, guys. Classy, you're drinking wine from the pint glass. <laughs> is it popcorn and pint? Cheers. Oh, Cheers. Cheers, fellas. Cheers, fellas. Yeah. Salute. <sighs> That's some sweet shit right there. It's diehard time, bitches. Diehard time. Yippee ki motherfucker. It's Aaron's first time, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I can't wow. believe it was his first time watching this. You Have you seen any of the other ones? Nope. I won't go with no okay. on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes that happens. Someone will yeah. watch like a number two and they want yeah. to know the number one. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first Indiana Jones I saw was the second one with the, uh, the Asian kid. Temple uh, of Doom. Yeah, that no was time for time love, Doctor Jones. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I can't. The remember. only line I remember. I can't remember. I think Doctor Jones. Doctor Jones. I think I watched the first one. 
Same thing with Die Hard. I've seen the first one. Even though you know Bruce Willis is in a lot of movies that has like the word die and hard in it. <laughs> like when I was when I searched it, there's a few other movies that had those words in it as the key title. You sure that was Bruce Willis? Yeah. And you weren't on a porn site? No, mm-hmm. it wasn't that one. Yeah, extra hard. You... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bru- Bruce that was uh, Bruce Big Willis, the, yeah, the yeah, porn yeah. actor. Totally different guy. <laughs> Aaron, what were your thoughts since this was your yeah. diehard uh, cherry pop? Here's my thought right here. When he shoots some of these people, why didn't he take anybody's shoes instead of walking around? Because <laughs> he took yeah, you know, shoes and he took a walkie talkie, which was smart, but why not some shoes? Good point. Maybe they, Dude, maybe, maybe is... they checked it wasn't their size. No, wait, this is the one thing I harp on this entire movie every year I watch it is because Okay, he took them off to do that toe thing that the guy on the plane jokingly tells him about. But his shoes are still <laughs> right there in the room with him when yeah. all the gunshot and everything yeah. starts going off. Like, if I'm barefooted, the first thing I'm doing is grabbing my shoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. They, they just wanted to make it more difficult yeah. for, for him, and that's just another thing. Just to make, to make him make more badass. That dude ran exactly. across glass. Oh, just yeah. To, uh, yeah. Doing all this badass shit. Yeah. But Aaron's then, green. He's turning Hulk. Hulk yep, mode. That's yeah. Hulk Aaron. But <laughs> to be fair, he does the first terrorist he kills, he does try on his shoes, but they're too small, apparently. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then he doesn't try again the rest of the movie no. after murder and the, re- the other 10 people. <laughs> that, that was so that was like that was probably shoehorned in there because someone said, Hey, why doesn't this guy get shoes? And the writer's like, Yeah, fuck that. I don't really want to do it, but I'll just put something in. That'll maybe justify it so that people are like, oh well, I tried that, but now motherfucker tried again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, really. There are other opportunities too. He came across tape, everything. He wrapped a gun around him, but he he could have wrapped his tape up. They're bleeding like crazy. He could have put like a shirt or cloth or something taped them up. Dude, I have uh, I have sensitive feet. There's no way I'm running around a building barefoot. Hell no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just, yeah. but I mean, you know, like this this film is really really good. Like it despite is some of the nitpicky stuff. This movie yeah. is like really fucking good. Um, Every movie has better. nitpicky shit. But, yeah, you know, if it fits, it fits. You know, it's a yeah. good movie. Action packed all the way through. Well, not all the way through. It's like the first beginning is like when the plane right when he gets there, and you know, he's in the. Uh, once once Gruber and his crew start rolling in, yeah, that's then where that's it, when shit happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think starts- here's the real question. So, Aaron, is okay. You you're the one who gets to decide for everyone for the rest of time. Is this a Christmas movie? Yes or no? Hell yeah. Yeah, there we go. You know, after watching this, I'm going to agree. They mentioned Christmas a few times. It was during a Christmas party. Look at that shot. He's got behind him. Like, it's totally Christmas. It's just an action movie. I'm going to to agree. No, this is a Christmas movie. I mean, come on. The whole thing happens on Christmas Eve, sure. Uh, they're at a Christmas party. For shit's sake, most of the music in this movie is Christmas music to some extent. Even the yeah. people that are humming and just singing to themselves. I'll, I'll agree at this time. Back then, and I he, used to say no, and but I feel I'm like go with it. Even the last line of the movie, uh, our man Argyle there, the limo driver, <laughs> he's like, if this is your idea of Christmas, I can't wait till New Year's. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I it's, agree. It wasn't. I don't think it was snowing, but like the explosion made it look like it was kind of snowing as they were coming all the, out at it was, the end. It was all the glass shattering and the yeah. fucking ash and shit from the helicopters <laughs> getting destroyed. But uh, yeah, man, I think it's a good movie. <clears throat> good movie. Even though I'm sure everybody noticed, you had um, Officer Winslow. Reginald Vell Johnson. Yeah, Officer Winslow there. After that, he had to go back and tell, you know, Steve Urkel and all them the story. What the hell happened that night? Dude, uh, that's how he got Family Matters. Yeah, that's how he got it. He had to be. <laughs> but that was that was crazy. I was sitting there. I was like, holy shit! I forgot he was in here. And yeah, it certainly helped his career quite a bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. And he you did know what? Good too. He did good. I still. Uh, I'm up super early for work. Our Family Matters is on reruns, of course, and, of and I course, watch yeah. it and well, I drink a cup of coffee before going to work. Family Matters, a lot of shit back in the day. They, they even played Married Children, so. <clears throat> but yeah, you can't go wrong Family Matters. I used to watch it. It was, uh, you know, ABC, was it TJI Fridays? Yeah, it was on the Friday Night lineup, yeah. baby. Yeah, 
Yeah. Reginald Phil Johnson. And of course he's a cop in the, that show. So yep. same outfit, basically. Yeah. Same the outfit. Same look that <laughs> yes, <everything>. It's <laughs> the same character. Yep. It's almost a diehard <laughs> spinoff. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with you on that. That's well, considering how many things have been spun off of this movie, um, getting you know that type of a show makes sense. Yeah, because like I mean, there there are so many diehard. Like if you just look up diehard ripoffs, um, there was that Dwayne Johnson movie was a skyscraper or some shit. Oh yeah, straight yeah, up, straight yeah, yeah. up, same thing except diehard with a guy with one leg. That that was the intro. Yeah, you, yep, you're right. That well, was it's funny because way. Air Force yeah, One this- diehard on a plane. Yep. You know? You know you created some cultural phenomenon when you describe every action movie afterwards as Die Hard, but in this scenario. <laughs> yeah. Die Hard yeah. Underwater. Like, oh. Yeah, di- exactly. Die Hard Underwater. Die Hard on a plane. <laughs> yeah. Die That's Hard on people... a train. So basically even to... with a terrorist. Yeah. There's even one to guy this... who saves the day. Yeah, even to this day, people still use that term. It's like Die Hard, but, you know, yep. in a volcano. Yeah, exactly. Die Hard in space. Yeah. You know. It's always the one dude too. He goes around. He gets to talk. He's like, "I don't know if I'm gonna make it." You know, tell my wife. But he goes around and he kicks everybody's ass. <laughs> he just he just fucks them all up. He takes them all out. The cops didn't even have to show up. Eventually, he would have just got them all. Yeah. <laughs> cops got in the way. Like, you fucked the whole thing up. Yeah. And um, back to his feet though. After you know, he has that scene with Hans Gruber and Gruber notices he's not wearing shoes. So they just start shooting the windows out for all the yep. glass. Yep. That I'm like, says, shoot the glass. Yeah. And he's dragging himself into the bathroom with just this super noticeable trail of blood. I'm like, how is, how are none of these terrorists just following the blood trail? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how is he safe in this bathroom while he tries to clean up? There's like two smart terrorists. There's Hans Gruber and then uh, the black dude. Everyone else is like pretty dumb. Pretty yeah, much. he just, knows yeah. all of them are like Fabio looking. Back in the day, everybody had long blonde hair. Yep. Well, these were a bunch Dude. of Germans, right? They're a bunch of like East Germans or West Germans or some shit. Yeah, like that. If, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, his main henchman there with the long blonde hair, I think he was like a ballet dancer or something like that. Oh, I have no clue on that one. I don't know. Yeah, the like the hella tall with the long hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one was pissed <laughs> Where he just beats the, the shit out of the dude. I love that. He's just yeah. beating the shit out of him. He killed my brother. I want to kill him. Dude, and Argyle is one of the most nosiest limo drivers I have ever seen yeah. <laughs> in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, he's Nosy as hell. But he's, getting he, yo, getting he's kind of chilling. personal. It's like, she divorced you? Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. he just he just just does what he does. He sits there, he's drinking in a limo, drinking a freaking... Yeah, alcohol. drinking and, and then driving away at the end after he's yeah. been sitting there drinking in the limo. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that character in... Um... This is character in Austin Powers, Basil Exposition. <laughs> like they gave him that name as a joke where it's just like the purpose of this character is to just say things that are important so that we understand what's going on. Oh. It's kind of the limo drive. Or like the Greek chorus is like another way they put it, but you know. And I fun. constantly forget this movie was actually based on a book. Yeah. And this is actually this is actually another one in a series. So yeah, there's a whole thing. Like the writer had written some other stuff. I think there was another book that's almost like the same character, but it was done. Yeah, it was done. It was um, it was a Steve McQueen movie in like the 70s oh, okay. where it's like a cop. And then there's like some person gets murdered in New York and he's trying to figure out that that movie is basically the, the, the prequel to this. Yeah. And it's a it, and it's that basically that same character. But then he's doing this whole thing, going to New York, uh, going to L.A. from New York. Uh, and then, you know, he gets sucked into this whole affair. So yeah, there's actually pretty much um, uh, a, it's not a direct prequel or whatever, but it, it's a movie that directly inspired a lot of the stuff that happens before Die Hard. Yeah. I mean, I think they, I mean, they, I think they did a, uh, at least from what I was reading, they actually got a lot of the book material into the movie. Uh, the book was Nothing Lasts Forever, 1979. Oh, that sounds like a James Bond movie. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's. I, I think did the guy who wrote the book write the script? Uh, no, I don't think. No, 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 no. It was someone else. Yeah. Yeah, it was someone else. Some. Uh, the author of the book, Roderick Thorpe, who I'm not an author I had ever heard of before. Uh, the screenwriter or the writing credit goes to a Jeb Stewart. 
who wrote the script for this. Yeah, I feel I feel like the guy who wrote the novel, like, you know, there's those people who just like like your your thing would be to like write the Bond novels, but then you end up writing the like kinda you know, like like the kind of paperback stuff where you just like got that really over the top cover. It's like a dude like fucking shooting in a shootout or something. And it's like in the crime section. That's basically what this guy wrote. Um like he was that kind of a writer, but then, you know, ends up creating Die Hard. So it's kind of a claim to fame pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to top these days, I would think, still. Mm. Yeah, I think I think for me the only others that really like there's nothing there's very few that are like in this where it's kind of grounded and there's sort of a realism. But like I I you know, The Matrix is a movie that I think is another really, really good action movie, and so is like Terminator 2. And even like Predator, but like those are all where you know it's people fighting some other kind of sci-fi bad guy or something else. But this is like interesting because it's 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 supposed to be sort of a grounded in realism type of thing. Like this is something that can happen. Yeah, you know. Well, this was also, from what I can tell, kind of one of the first movies where you had that hero that was just your normal guy who was you know. Got he can fail. Be, he can fail. He's stubborn. He's not your all America gun ho, you know, do things by the book hero. For and that's the the kind of the guy they wanted to cast. And this was actually, I think this was only like Bruce Willis's second actual feature movie. Mm. He was yeah, really they kinda, only they didn't really want him, yeah. I think at first. They just think they didn't think that he was they want Art Schwarzenegger or something. They made a joke, you notice he mentioned it. He says it in there. He mentions Arnold. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he says something like, I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they offered it. They offered it to him and uh, Stallone, who both turned it down. Uh, and, I, yeah, if they, I'm not, and I think the director is the same director up. who did Predator. <laughs> yeah. I worked with Arnold. So mm-hmm. they had they knew Arnold going into this. Well, they don't. See, the thing is, I think it would be weird if you had like Arnold's size in there. Yeah, right? Like, like you'd be like, he wouldn't be able to fit through the duct. He gets stuck. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, he gets stuck. <laughs> and, and I mean, how is how is Arnold Schwarzenegger a New York cop like this? Yeah, yeah no, really. Dude. Yeah. With a, with an Austrian accent. Yeah, like, no. hey, I'm from New York. I'm here to see my wife. It's like, no, you ain't from New York, dude. And you, and you notice that all the all the heroes are like a cop that's like in a different city, who, mm-hmm. who does this shit. Like, don't follow the rules. It's always a New York cop. <laughs> it's, it's always a New well, York. Well, y'all, y'all, New York people don't give a shit <laughs> new york city cops especially like in the 80s yeah they're like this is not my district i run this shit anyways i'm a cop i'll do what i want yeah. dude and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that was one rowdy ass christmas office christmas party <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad that one guy died though oh man yeah that was that, uh, that, that douchey was, guy yeah, yeah the douche yeah. He's the guy with the beard ratting everybody out <laughs> this uh Total One of the shit. reasons Hans Gruber was great. Yeah. Yeah. Some people they just they need to get that bullet. He needed to catch a bullet. So yeah, he yeah. Did. a little justice in the universe. No, oh, but yeah, this was really kind of a big. Uh, well, I mean, Bruce Willis was filming Moon. Is it Moonlighting? The his show he was on at the time. But no, uh, honestly, I I don't even think I ever seen it. I haven't seen it, but that's uh, that was kind of like his first big acting gig, and this is kind of the movie that really made him. I think a star. Same thing for group or uh, Alan Rickman. Yeah, he was doing. I think, for, at least from what I could tell, looking into it, basically everyone they cast was people they saw acting in other things. So they had an idea for the most part. Yeah, the uh, chief of police guy. He's in. Um, he's like a main actor in a lot of stuff I've seen before. Like, yeah, he's yeah. Like a chief or something. He's always like a. He's oh, always yeah. a cop, or he. Yeah. Is. Yeah, he's like chief of police or a cop or like oh, he's a dick. or like uh yeah or, yeah he's a dick and or he's like he's like um I don't know like a lawyer or something or like some some kind of authority yeah, it's like a, yeah like a who's getting in their way. I'm know? trying to think he was in one of the um I don't think he's the Dude, wasn't he cop and Beverly Hill cop, is he? He's wasn't that. wasn't he in um like what was it like Breakfast Club or one of those? Yes, he's the he was the, the guy who put him in uh detention. Yeah, on, he's on the Saturday. one who put him in detention, yeah. Yeah, oh, really? that's him. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. He's a guy I know I've seen. Club. Yeah, he's a guy I know I've seen in a lot of things, but I would never remember his face if I didn't just oh, didn't already see it in the movie. Yeah. Then you got the then they do that that uh, 
a stereotypical thing when the FBI comes. They're like the douchiest assholes. Yep. And there's always only two. And they're like, we got this. Oh. It's always the FBI is like, they start taking over shit and don't Dude. make no sense. And uh, I'm, as I'm watching, you know, them try to assault the building and get in and they bring in their tank there, the LAPD yeah, the- tank. <laughs> I'm like, how does the, it looks like it gets stuck on the one set of stairs that has to go up. Yeah, it hit the rail. Oh, yeah, like it, <laughs> like it can't get up the stairs, and that's what makes gives you know Gruber's henchmen enough time to shoot the rocket at him. They hit it what three times? Yeah. Damn! I'm like, what the hell? I thought the but, first one took it out. They're like, hit I mean, it again. You spend literally like sixty seconds just watching this tank driving, <laughs> coming yeah. down the road closer and closer. I'm like, how fucking far away is this thing? How far away are they set up? And then it's speeding, and then it turns, and it goes to go up the steps, and then it just like stops. Yeah. I'm like, what? I, I'm shocked. Like, I think it was going to. I think it's part of his plan. He didn't want to actually shoot the cops, but they should have took out that rocket launcher a long time ago and just shot it in the crowd of the police instead of waiting for the tank to come. They're like, oh, we get to finally use this thing. Let's hit that car. Hit it. Fuck a giant ass rocket launcher. They had to bolt it down. <laughs> they took it out, put on a thing, and you're dun, 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 dun. I was like, what the hell's going on here? These movies, man. These 80s and 90s movies, titties and explosions, man. That's all they are. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Action. At, Cocaine, not- sex, and alcohol at an yeah. office Christmas party. That's great. You see a, the 80s movie and you see the word action. That's every movie had something blowing up. Mm-hmm. Well, she worked for a bank, right? Like it was a bank. Was it a bank? I don't think it's ever really clear. <laughs> clear I feel like, I feel like it's a bank it is. or some kind of thing. But like, oh, yeah, I mean, all the, all the, all the bank, building? these bank dudes, like, that's all it was. Yeah, in the eighties, it was cocaine and sex. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, I mean, the most they reference work is they talked about closing a couple big deals like that. But literally, I have no idea what kind of deal. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's why I thought it was like a law office at first, like a Japanese law office, because they're like usually you make a big, or like a um, what does the big deal shit like people go and uh, you travel other countries and you're like, yeah, we got this account, like a uh, freaking marketing or something like yeah, that. something like that. But they had like a vault for money, and they had like samurai armor and shit in there, mm-hmm. like all this expensive like old stuff that. Yeah. Oh, so who else noticed how fake the background was in Holly's office through the windows of what's supposed to be L.A.? Oh, Literally, no. this is clear like as day. Di- yeah, <laughs> clear as day, yeah. just a banner they put in the windows. <laughs> clear as day. I'm like, I this this is a banner. It looks like someone just painted. <laughs> Usually I catch stuff like that, but I don't think I was paying attention. No, and I... And I get stuck on this scene every time I watch this movie. I'm like, I can't believe that's <laughs> what the, that's what they decided to try to fake the L.A. skyline or something like that. <laughs> Wasn't most uh, of the movie uh, actually recorded, like uh, filmed? They filmed. They filmed most of it at the actual tower. Yeah. Which I think I think in real life it's like Fox Tower or something like that or okay. Fox Plaza. I don't remember. There's... Not Nakatomi Plaza, unfortunately. That's a fake. Yeah. Movie. It's real so Aaron, like, why'd you bring your your Mogwai to this uh, <laughs> to this screening? Oh yeah, Gizmo. Yeah, it's fun. Gris- Gizmo's Christmas. Yeah, he's just chilling. He had yeah, fun he from the other chilling. night. He's just chilling again. Yeah. Big Gremlins the other. Was night. it don't don't feed him after midnight or whatever? Yep. Yeah. Don't get him wet. Don't feed him after midnight. Gremlin rules. Gremlin. Isn't that so? Like, isn't it always after midnight though? That's what. Yeah, that's almost said that. I think my wife said that. Yeah. She goes, um, is it six in the morning after midnight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell time you gotta eat them? What, what time? Yeah, well, it's, it's like something. when you say don't wear white after Labor Day. I'm like, isn't every day after Labor Day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> See? yeah, like when can you start wearing white again, right? Yeah, like, no, that's really. the real question. That is funny when they said that it made no sense. They could have actually left that out, like, it still would have made sense. Like, if you got them wet. Yeah, because like don't feed the gremlin between twelve yeah. a.m. and six a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that twelve, 12 or, to six. Don't feed them. Every other yeah. time, it's fine. That or he don't eat. They don't eat human food or something. Don't not feed them at all. They don't eat. If you they eat, it fucking makes them yeah. toxic or it, something. Yeah, you know? it kills them or it's 
turns them into the yeah evil but... gremlins. Pop out of them like a bunch of fucking popcorn. <laughs> What were some of your favorite scenes in this movie? Oh. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Aaron, your first time watch. What do you got? What yeah. do you like? Yeah, give me a minute or two. I'm going to call a bullshit <laughs> scene, though. Aaron's uh, a little slow to react right now. <laughs> real quick. Aaron, you know where you are? Yes. Okay. Nakatomi Plaza. The cab driver. What's his name again? Argyle. Argyle, my guy. When, at, <laughs> towards the end, when he crashes into the van. Saves the day. Saves the day, yeah. Or at least stops the getaway. Yeah. Potential getaway. Yeah, yeah, he did his thing, though. He did his thing. He could have just been chilling back, minding his own black business. But he's like, he just seen that. He just seen that like fake ambulance come out the back. And he was like, what the fuck? He didn't question. He was like, I'm just going to hit this shit. I think it's a bad guy. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to hit it. But he was right. Got that into uh, what, do you, what do you think it's like to be uh, an actor... You know, a technical. You know, one of the main names in the one of the biggest action movies ever made, and your role was really just to hang out in a limo, pretending to get hammered and play on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> for for the whole time. That's, that's gonna, it's pretty what? hilarious. That's all he did. But my thing is, what was what did that check look like? And shit, people pretty are good. I mean, X amount of years later, in the small. Well, I mean, oh, no, Br- Bruce Willis made five million for this movie, which. Uh, the Being a rel- relatively, you know, minor star at the time was like excessive. Like big, bigger stars weren't even getting five mil at a time at in eighty early to mid eighties. Yeah, the thing for him too was like this. This spun off. This this created his career. He got to do like what is it like four or five total Die Hard movies? There's a lot. Yeah, Die One, Hard. Two, three. Three. I think Die I think there's two. five. Yeah, I, I think, think there's, there's five. I, I I've seen basically all of them other than the one with the kid, like the the he had his son. Never seen that shit. You're talking like they not like they brought it back like newer versions like in the uh, high two thousands or something. Yeah, two thousand seven they did basically another because like the third one was really successful. It was the highest grossing movie of the year it came out, but then yeah. they kind of didn't do another one for a while, and then they did because John McTiernan. That's another thing to talk about. John McTiernan, he got into some shit. He, uh, so he did this movie Murder Ball, I think it was. Sounds and he got right. into this big thing with the producer. So he, he then, so they got into this huge fight, right? So he then illegally records the producer talking about something, trying to use it. Uh, that's a federal crime. Yep. And he had to do time. So that's wow. why you haven't heard of him at all. He literally had to do time because he committed a felony over a fight with the producer and it fucked up his career completely fucked Jeez. up his career uh ba- he basically banished himself from everything <laughs> but um yeah um uh, i forgot what i was saying but yeah stuff happens <laughs> is, is rappers the only one who can make stuff while we're in prison you know that rappers get a whole album while well, in prison. I, think, I think julia child the no 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 it was it was <laughs> it was uh whoa, martha was stewart martha stewart she went to prison and that, that helped, helped her, her career. Yeah, it helped yeah, it her. Yeah, she had some fact, street cred. Well, and she crossed yeah. over for real. No, it did. She crossed it over op- with Snoop Dogg and shit. Oh, yeah. It opened up <laughs> so many more opportunities for her. Yeah. <laughs> On some straight up gangster shit where she was like, you know, doing insider trading and stuff like Dude, that. Dude, her and yeah. Snoop Dogg has some kind of cooking show or something. They did? Yeah. Yeah. It, and the commercial now for the uh, uh, avocado dip. Or whatever the hell it is. You yeah, those, those two are like best friends now. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I, I bet she smokes with them too. Oh, yeah. She gets high as well. Well, I think I've read. I think I've talk, talked about this before, but like, if you ever look at like like the dude DMX, man, that dude has a rap sheet, dude. Like the, yeah. the fucking cops, wherever it is, LA, New York, wherever he's at, they fucking were on his ass. Cause like, it's like every, uh, every like three months, it's like, you know, went to prison for this, but like got, caught with a illegal firearm got caught with this got caught with that like and it's all like within three years and it's like holy shit <laughs> all his money went away with fines and lawyers probably <laughs> probably yeah yeah and then there was the other guy uh, i forget his name uh what was the song he did it was like oh you shake your ass you remember that song shake your ass uh, I, I remember that i don't know who was that it's um I forget his name, but, but so this dude, do you know what this dude did? He tried to go on a commercial flight with a Uzi. (laughs) (laughs) And like, in like 2000, I swear to God, he tried to go on a commercial flight with a Uzi. 
Why? And they were like, because he's a fucking gangster ass dude. He he was trying to go somewhere and like you know handle there's his little, business, man. There's like, literally like, no reason for that. Like like hold on a second. You're telling me that I can't? I'm going. I, I'm in first class. I can't take my fucking Uzi. Nah, Are you kidding me? He was I get free drinks, one. but I can't have a fucking Uzi. <laughs> he was counting as one of those things where people bring their pets on where you're not supposed to bring them because it calms them down. <laughs> They're like, yo, I got my Uzi. Yeah. It helps me out. And I'm stressful. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I think the dude's name was Mystical. Mystical. Oh, oh Mystical. Yeah. Mystical. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that, 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 that sent him. He was, he was banished. <laughs> so even was he couldn't come back from that shit. <laughs> 2000. That, I think that had, that was, def- that was early 2000s at the yeah. latest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, Mr. Cal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shake it's crazy. Your ass. I think Watch the, yourself. The same thing happened. There was another Show me guy. what you're working with. That's how. Yep. Now I had that stuck me, in my head down for one. Now is it just me when you watch this movie? Then you just want to put on a like a white beater on? Dude, yeah, that uh that wife beater got <laughs> non-white real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, 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 that's one of the my, one of the thoughts I have as I'm watching this. I'm like, there's literally not a speck of white left on no. that tank top. I'm it like, was, it, it can't possibly be that dirty. It was so yeah. bloody, it turned muddy looking. Like it had brown blood everywhere. It was just, yeah, it was a hot mess. One of my favorite scenes, though, in this movie by far is just the elevator scene where he sends the dead guy down where the and he wrote on the sweatshirt ho 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 i have yeah. a machine gun now <laughs> he's like i got a machine gun guys oh speaking of elevator thing i think it was the elevator shaft again there's like a couple of scenes that look like an elevator shaft is when he uh the, the machine gun he used it as a uh anchor yep and where he slipped and fell and he caught himself on one of the vents there's yeah. no way man come on he would have hit that his fingers would have went fucking hurt like how he would have just went wee all yeah. down i said i called that was like bullshit but then it's a movie it's an action star you know yeah a movie and it's bruce willis man you can't fuck around if that i like that I, I like the hose scene on the roof i like how he talks himself into it it's like what the fuck is wrong with you what are you doing what are you doing John? <laughs> <laughs> he's tying the freaking holes around himself to go jump off the building i like that part a lot that was a good scene it was a yeah. fun Oh, it's great because, you know, he knows he's doing something insane because he's a regular guy. It's not something that should yeah. be happening. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I can't do this. What the hell am I doing? Yeah, it worked out. And then um, when he's in the conference room going under the table with the guy on top shooting down at him, and he's the guy has to stop to reload his gun. He's like, next time you should shoot as soon as you see someone. So he just shoots him up through the table, basically in the dick. Yeah, I shot him in the <laughs> so dick, the like, thighs. Oh. He's like, yeah. Thank, thanks for the advice. Yeah, yeah, I love thanks for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. Love Bruce Willis, man. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, he's, and then I, good stuff. Uh, he's great. And the, one of the one time I really cracked up is uh, one of the first times he's on the radio <laughs> and the police chief takes it from Reginald Vell Johnson, who I feel like I need to use his full name every time I refer to him. <laughs> Not even an act. I don't even remember what the character's name was. I go, there's Reginald. I think it's Al. Is it Al? I'm not yeah, sure. I think that was right. And to me, it's Uncle Carl. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. Uncle Carl. Hey, Carl. Officer and he's like, uh, and uh, the chief's threatening him with something, and Bruce Willis just yells back into the mic, "I'm not the one that just got butt fucked on national television." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then he was like, "Damn it! Here, take this back. <laughs> take this back. I don't want to say anything else." Yeah, I'll say nothing. Yeah, I think the guy's out because I think he said that he was like, "He's Carl. You're mispronouncing Carl." Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Carl for short. Carl. Carl, there you go. <laughs> Carl. I wonder if that's how they got his name when he went to a thing. They're like, you're going to be Carl because you're Al from. Uh, <laughs> okay. We're just going to put Carl Can for you. you. Car? Okay, that works. Yeah. Right. Thoughts on Hans Gruber as a villain? I like it. it. He has that terrorist really vibe, like smart terrorist. Yeah. It, it's crazy how it was just for a robbery. All oh, yeah. that shit just for a robbery. Yeah. So it was it was like a terrorist thing. He even did those things. He goes, I want the seven Chinese son, sons or something released just to make it seem like it was like a terrorist cartel type thing going yep. on. It was a genius plan. But just for a robbery for six hundred million dollars. And then when the It's a lot of money. It's John a lot McClane, of money. Yeah. yeah. John McClane's wife says this was 
you're just a common thief. He's like, no, ma'am, I'm an exceptional thief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now a kidnapper or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. you, I, and you should be flattered that I'm moving up to kidnapping now with you. Yeah. yeah. No, I think he's a good actor. You know? Dude, and again, this was like a big break for him too. Dude, he was like forty here, yeah. early forties at least. This is kind of like where his career started to really yeah. take off too. It was a lot of theater before yeah. this for him. Well, I think he did a good job. So, I, and he's like, missed. I the world could like still that. use Alan Rickman for sure. Yeah, yeah. Of course, everybody's going to say he's best known for Harry Potter's. The younger generations, but yeah, everybody else knows him from. You know, die hard. <laughs> Hans Gruber, baby. Yeah. I uh, even at work in the office. I don't. I don't remember how this started. Well, I do, but it's a long story. But we cut out pictures of Hans Gruber and then just paste them everywhere. Like I printed out sheets of his little head and cut them out. I just <laughs> throw them at people. There's <laughs> when you walk into my cubicle at work. There's this big black and white hand drawn picture that I printed out of Hans Gruber on this cabinet. It's the first thing you see. <laughs> Jeez. You wow. know what I did? I printed out a picture of James at work. Oh yeah. Around it and put it in our boy Dustin's his cubicle. I went on my honeymoon, so I was gone for uh <laughs> Yeah, he was laughing so I was gone for a while. Jeez. You know, that's still there, Aaron, by the way. You didn't even know I did it. I put because I think I put one in like my cubicle and a few other cubicles. Yeah. Then on my chair. They put a picture yeah. on my chair. <laughs> but uh that's still in Dustin's cubicle. That's awesome. Oh, and if you want to jump back to this being a Christmas movie point, I noticed this. This is the first time I've noticed this. When Gruber and um, the guy he has breaking into the vault, fi it finally opens. They play. They don't just play Christmas music. It's like the heroic Christmas music you would hear if a good guy was just accomplishing something. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. It was like that. Uh, like, it's the perfect score right yeah, there. Yep. Yeah. Like, it it's it's like that uptick in this i don't even know what christmas song it originates from but it's like an orchestra an orchestra type version and it's just yeah. a real uplifting musical moment <laughs> i'm like this is yeah. kind of hilarious yeah yeah i agree I, I definitely went with that yes like i said I, I didn't see this in so long and i was with the argument i was like no it's a terrorist movie it's not christmas but then i watched it and i was like okay i'm going to agree this is a christmas movie Oh hell yeah, by far. There's no way it can't be. I mean, shit. It's it's a Christmas movie. If people disagree with that, I don't under I I guess I can see why because it's action, but at the same time, shit happens around Christmas, obviously. It's either action or you gotta go find Santa. It's one it's one or the other. Yeah. You know, whatever story you get stuck with. Santa was in it. He was a dead body he went, you know, you know. <laughs> it was in there. It was a really good movie though. It was a really good movie. That was really good. I mean, and if you want it, the first time I noticed this part too, where he's coming out towards the end and he has that gun taped to his back. Yeah. Uh, it's Christmas themed tape. Oh, shit. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it had, what, it had like Santa faces on it or something? I don't. It said it had some Christmas saying on it. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. It was over on the side near the mail. Yeah. It was like all for the packaging. Like, come on. They're per setting this up specifically as just Christmas. Yeah, they're they're shooting in, they're throwing in your face everywhere. My I mean, I, I saw this I saw this thing on the internet. The internet has decided like every Christmas, this movie is like the the amount of searches go up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. Like the people have decided. <laughs> yeah, I was one of them actually. When we were talking about it, I actually did it. I was looking up yeah, Christmas yeah. movies. This popped up. Yeah, Gremlins <laughs> pops up. Yeah, Home Alone, yeah. and you just see a whole list. You're like. Wow, there's a lot of people searches and they're they're all saying these are Christmas movies. And it's funny because that's something that's just happened over time because this was a big summer blockbuster when it came out uh, to mixed reviews. Uh, but and of course, right. <laughs> how is that I, possible? <laughs> yeah, I know. Really, it it was really reevaluated. You know, just over the years, people finally realizing, fuck it, just all the stuff that came after this was you know, a version of or described yeah, like this. So it got reevaluated and, you know, classified as one of the best action movies ever made. <laughs> but it, and I think at the time it only grossed like a hundred, I mean, it grossed 140 some odd million dollars on a budget of, I was think 35? maybe 35 million. Yeah, I think it was 35. So that's a success, but I'd love to see the uptick 
in whatever money DVD or rental sales it makes each year at this time. I think that'd be super curious. I just yeah. fucking bought this movie. I, that was what? Seven ninety nine. See? Baron's a prime yeah, example. There you go. Yeah, prime example. You did it. Prime, prime example. We're not a sponsor, but you see how we connect with that Amazon Prime? Yeah, come on, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Just give us a million dollars to run this. And you know, yeah. Jeff. That's, you it's like like, it, it, that's like four pennies that fell yeah, out of a hole in his yeah. pocket he didn't know he had. You yeah. You're giving money to two African Americans. That can make you look good right now in some people's eyes. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, Wrong fellas? No. <laughs> yeah. Hook, uh, hook us up with the money. See? Hook us up with the money. But no, this was a very amazing movie. This is definitely, I can see it. I, I see it as a Christmas movie. Obviously, you can see people seeing it as just an action movie, but it's both. It's an action movie. It's a Christmas movie. Watch it in July or watch it in December. doesn't matter. Either way, very entertaining. It's a very fun movie. And it's one of those movies I feel like I could be wrong with this, but you'll, you'll appreciate it more if you grew up with the 80s movies or when you were little, you've got shown the 80s movies versus if you're just seeing them now, you're going to say they sucked. <laughs> Yeah, like, this you know, now I'll say as like a 20 year old, 21 year old or something, something early in the early 20s, but they've been like a movie buff and they're just seeing 80, 80s movies now. They may, they, it's tough. They're like, oh, this is corny. I don't know. Eh. But then again, I don't know because they're uh, so simple, <laughs> they're both just fucking amazing. Yeah, this was not the first Die Hard movie I saw. I think Die Hard 3 was probably the first one I saw just based on when I was born and by the time I was old enough to watch them. <laughs> I want to say I've seen them all. I might have not seen the the newest one that came out, like uh, like the two thousand seven one or whatever yeah, it was. Live free or die hard. Yeah. Yeah. Where uh, where he's fighting a uh, he's fighting an F thirty five with a truck. Yeah. And he wins. It, it definitely gets away from what the spirit of Die Hard was. <laughs> yeah, it gets oh, away nice. from a lot of things, yeah, unfortunately. They- they, they go they go too far and it, and it fucks up a little bit. But I doing? get it though because it's it's money. Yeah, it's money. Yeah, they're just like, listen, we need you to fight an airplane with this fucking truck right here. You're gonna win. Don't worry. They're gonna blow out three of the four tires towards the end of the movie. But you're. Yeah. <laughs> or another example. Another example. Rocky. Here. You're gonna time it right before the truck flips. You're gonna hop in a helicopter, shoot the guy right in the head. You're gonna make the. <laughs> how, how many Rockies are gonna make? Sylvester Stallone is like in a walker. Well, they got chocolate Rocky now. What's yeah, he, he pawned that. He, oh, the Apollo Cruise song? Yeah, Apollo Cruise song, yeah. Apollo something? Oh, Creed, Creed, yeah, Creed, they, yeah, they yeah. pawned it off onto him now. Yeah. He sure. gave it to him. Rocky was, uh, chocolate Rocky. Yeah. Chocolate Rocky. Listen, Sebastian, we don't know what the hell you're saying. We're going to give yeah. somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Oh, What's Byron. funny, too, is that that totally revitalized the franchise, which yeah, is crazy. Just so they can keep going with it. They found yeah. a way to yeah. do it. And, I mean, they, they're going to do Creed 3. So, so they're already on Creed three, Creed three, mm-hmm. and we've got what six Rocky movies? How many? How many just Rocky movies are there? Five, At least five, six, right? Five, maybe six. But I want to say I five. think I think I think I, five I'm not even sure. I know I've seen the first three. Oh, by the way, guys, another argument for this is a Christmas movie. Twelve terrorists for the twelve day, uh, twelve uh, days. Twelve terrorists, twelve days of Christmas. Okay, yeah. I like that. Yeah, That's a good. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> How is it, Ibrahim? How what? Twelve terrorists, twelve days of Christmas. That was yeah, there was twelve terrorists. That, that's a new one for me. Uh, that's that's a good one. Yeah, I haven't heard that first time I've put that together. Yeah. Now I want it on the first day of Christmas. <laughs> Han said to me. Han said to me. <laughs> <laughs> we need to like make that song. Yeah. Holy shit! One Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> Two exploding towers or something. I don't know. <laughs> and, and you notice there's always the one. Oh. Like there's, there's other movies with the like the uh, big buff, long blonde hair or something German. That's like a main villain who loses his cool. There's like for a lot of- the final straw in this being a Christmas movie. They made a Christmas themed children's book out of this, <laughs> and I go. have it at work. Oh, I go. wish I had it right now That's to read. I don't have it with it, dude. Go to Google it. Go do Die Hard Christmas book. I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I do have an announcement. So, Chris and James, one of you two brought up this conversation a week or two ago, 
and you're asking about a movie that I can't forget. Jean Claude Van Damme was in it involved in an explosion at a hockey rink. Yes, Time Cop. No, Sudden Damn. Death. Sudden Death. 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 That's it. Matt, yeah, that's okay. Big shout out to Matt. He, I was doing a podcast with him earlier, and I just had Jean Claude Van Damme, and he was like, "Have you ever seen Sudden Death?" That's, that's it. it. I remember yeah. watching that one. Yep. He said, "Did it have anything to do with a hockey rink and an explosion?" He said, "Yes." I was like, "My boy was just talking about this fucking movie." Two weeks ago, but nobody knew the title. So it's nope. called Sudden Death. We have to review that just because. And, and I was too lazy to look it up. That is true, too. James was way too late. He's like, I, I forgot all about it. <laughs> my, my phone right in front of me. I could have Googled it that night, and I was like, I'm too lazy. So, yeah, Sudden Death. Sudden I Death. Like Holy shit. I about that, guys, but I actually put, took some notes. <laughs> all right, cool. Because that was bothering me. Then I forgot about it. Then it wasn't bothering me no more. <laughs> I had totally forgotten about it. <laughs> I times. We'll have to throw some uh, Jean Claude Van Damme movies oh, yeah, of into Cy- our Cy- list Cyborg or something. Oh, speaking of DCPD, what, watch that. Ibrahim, I think you missed the conversation, but I guess we'll talk about it live. What we're going to do is use one of the, I think there's like randomizer.org. Oh, we're going to come fine. up with a list. Each of us is going to pick, what was it, 10 movies, right? I say each of us pick 10 movies, okay. seven uh that we enjoy three that uh could be interesting or we hate or just fun to trash and talk about uh, someone will just add throw these all into the randomizer and then at the end of each episode we'll just hit go and see <laughs> what it gives us for the next episode and we, one out. okay b- before we this is a group discussion group question before we uh do that should we go live with the results or should we just b- let it be a surprise till we post it oh it'll be a surprise It'll be a surprise. Or should we do it like at the end? Like yeah, we we'll said, do it at the, the end of whatever. Week? Yeah. No, we'll, just we'll, hit the generator. Yeah. Well, so let's say next week because we don't have anything planned. Right. We don't have anything yeah. scheduled right now. So, so, so if we do it at the end of the episode next week, or at some point in the episode next week, right? Yep. You should should I share this? Like, say if I do it, should I share the screen so we can all see it? Even sure. live can see yeah, it. Yeah, you can do that. Huh? Yeah, well, man. Okay, cool, cool. So you guys get to see what movies we're actually going to be reviewing, and I know what you guys are already thinking. I know what you guys are thinking. I'm going to have a heavy focus on the 80s. I can tell you that. Yeah, most likely. Um, fuck, I forgot. Oh, once we pick a movie, that movie's excuse me, going to come off that list until our whole list is done. Oh, so yeah. It's not oh, yeah. Makes sense. We're professional. And we I may still- have, an, a, and I'm sure we'll have an occasional one-off from that list that we need to throw in or a uh, like a hit a, or something. Yeah, no, hit a franchise of some kind. That's almost. We should. That's an episode in itself. We could have a good two-hour discussion talking about something like that. Our list, like all of our top ten lists or top seven movies of all time. Now, oh, these are by no means m- going to oh, be ten of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, <laughs> oh, movies. oh fuck it. Either either way, we can have that list. Like, do it live. You know, like read it off live to the people. Do live. Fuck it. And then we'll make the list up for the following week. Boom. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, because we're we're still like we 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 drudge through three two really shitty Batman movies, and we've yet to get to the good ones. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, it depends on what the randomizer picks. Yes, we're gonna have twenty one good ones on there, or no, twenty eight good ones on there. But there's still those however many are left. I'm not doing the math. <laughs> math is hard. <laughs> math is hard. Yeah, 12. there's still gonna be those twelve left. That's. That's going to be interesting because I say that because when we review a bad movie, we have a fucking great, amazing time. Everybody's laughing a lot. Everybody says some fucked up shit. I usually take it too far. But when we review a good movie, we'll bring up bad movies just to talk about sometimes. Like we did mention the Batman and Robin episode and the Batman Forever movies, which I do think is awesome that we do that. Mm. But that's why I have so much fun reviewing those sh- shitty fucking movies. Like Chris's least favorite actor, Vin Diesel, was yeah. last week. The Chronic, the Chronicles, Chronicles of, of Riddick, which uh, had Dick, and, like, seven stories. The Dick Chronicles. It was bad. I, it should have been the yeah, the Chronicles of Gizmo. That would have been a lot better. Giz, <laughs> Gizmo should have played Vin Diesel's part. I am Groot. Yeah. Gizmo. <laughs> Gizmo Kaka. So we will work on getting that together. Yes, we will. Oh, we'll we'll, and, game plan. 
anybody that uh, is watching will experience that fun moment with us each week as we decide what to suffer through the next. Yeah, there's going to be one of us like, fuck. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be the suffer. Or, or, I, it's going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining for you guys. Definitely. But it'll be entertaining for us. I mean, if you have to drudge through a movie, that'll be fine. We'll be all right. I mean, that's what alcohol's for. There you go. Yeah, we. So <laughs> we're good. So, all right. Did you guys? Oh, we didn't even do a rating for this movie yet. I meant to do one way earlier in the episode. We got. We got to do how many yippie kaiyes? Yeah. How many yippie kaiyes? How, how, how many yippie kaiyes out of ten? <laughs> all right. Seeing as how I was, this is like a first time watch for me. I'll go first with my rating. I give this movie. 10 yippee ki out of 10 yippee <laughs> yippee motherfucker. You get a 10. Nice. It's a fucking Christmas movie. And what makes it one of the better Christmas movies because it's a fun action movie. It's not the typical prankster kid or going to find Santa or some shit like that, which those are fun. Don't get me wrong. They're classics as well. But this is just one of those ones where it's just like, I got to put this on. Even if it's the day after Christmas, you got to fucking put this movie on. Oh, yeah. And it's just... We'll look back at the tape next year and see if I watch it by next year. But I plan on watching this the day after Christmas next year. <laughs> and it's just, it was a fun film for me. And it's, again, I know it came out in what, the late 80s. And I know how the 80s and 90s movies were, which you had fun with them. As you just grown up, it's all, you, it's all they had, obviously. So it's all you knew. And it's just like, oh, this is, this, is, this is cool. I like this. This is funny. This is fun. This is cool. And you got used to these movies because some of these movies you've seen at a younger age than you would now growing up as a kid just because it was just easier. To, I mean, between sneaking and seeing the movie at a friend's house or a cousin's house or sneaking and watching it late with a sibling, you've seen these movies and you grew up, you know, now you just fucking love them. And this is one of those movies I wish I would have seen, let's say, 15 years ago, at least, because it's 15, 20 years ago. Even. It's, it's dope. It's dope. Yeah, man. I think it's 10 yippee ki motherfuckers for me as well. <laughs> and I mean, I touched on this earlier. It's interesting because obviously the movie was successful at the time, uh, money wise and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, even taking the chance on Bruce Willis at the. It's funny to say taking a chance on Bruce Willis, but that's what they were doing at the time. They, I mean, they were even doing research or like this is having him here isn't going to hurt the movie, is it? And they, you know, and it paid off for him big time, but the cultural impact, clearly they didn't know what that was going to be afterwards. Just everything that came after this, you got into a period where you're comparing every action movie to Die Hard. It's Die Hard in this scenario. It's Die Hard in that scenario. And, you know, that's the mark of a movie that can change a genre. So, and I, you know, I didn't watch it at the didn't experience at this it experienced the movie in its heyday i'm watching it of course now 30 years later 25 years later however many times i've seen it in the last few years and i it's still a fucking joyride each time real quick what you just said though chris this movie is about 30 some odd years old and obviously you didn't see it when it first came out but as good as this movie is tells you why we all watched this movie. I mean, James and Ibrahim probably seen it at younger ages. Well, James, Ibrahim and Chris seen it at younger ages than I did, of course. i just seen it. But I can see why it sticks with you. I can see why Chris also gave it a 10 for someone that's seen the movie plenty of times. And I could see why James and Ibrahim are both going to give it a really good rating because they've seen it since they were kids. So the use of that 80s kind of cheese, the explosions, everything, you know, everything great happens. But it worked for this, and I just – that's why I gave it a 10. So take it away, one of you gentlemen. Yeah, so I'm going to give it nine yippee ki out of 10. I think this movie is really, really, really good. Um, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's, it's, like, it's like textbook how to make an action movie mm -hmm. is Die Hard. Um, yeah, I mean – and there's, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot – it can be said about, I was just thinking now of like the movie Speed, right? Die Hard on a, on a fucking bus. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Right? And it's just like all the, and those movies, those are, those are movies that are good, that are just direct riff-offs, spin-offs, you know, inspired by, and that's when you know a movie's good, when there's like the thing that is doing a similar version of this thing is also really popular. 
you know that the the core idea is just I like incredible. that. I mean, if you want to go the comedic route with the buddy cop movie, because you can do like more buddy cop now. Fucking the Rush Hour franchise. You can kind of see how yeah. it got some things from Die Hard. That's a big one. I even say Bad Boys to an extent. And I say that because in both cases, well, the one team was team. They were cool with each other. But in both cases, you went to like a different city or different country. It was, it was, there was something that was huge that was different for every single case. No, and it's... What's really interesting is the movies, you know, the side movies you talk about, not Speed, because that didn't really have any humor in it. But, uh, you know, it even did have that, some. I mean, yeah, some, but Joss Whedon dro- wrote a lot of jokes into that thing that ended up being made. There's more comedy in Die Hard than you realize if you, you know, follow in along with the dialogue. Like, there's, there's kind of a lot of fucking jokes in here. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, it's almost an action. Well, not slapstick comedy, just dialogue comedy. I think it's you have to be used to the 80s dialogue, though. If you're not used to the 80s dialogue, and again, like I said, just growing up watching it, no matter how old you are right now, but growing up watching it, it's going to have a different effect on you than if you just started watching it now as an adult or a teen, I would say. I don't know. I think, I think if a, like you, you're new, well, you're older, but if I think a teenager never heard Die Hard, if they watch Die Hard, I think they'll enjoy it because when you think of action movie, Die Hard's like popping in your head. It's like it's like a starter. It's like Die Hard, yeah. No, I, I get that, but I'm saying though, like say a, a 25-year-old, let's say has never seen this movie before, just by the looks alone, they may not I don't I don't like it. I, it, it, lo- it just looks mm-hmm. boring. Not all, but some will kind of misconstrue it like that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, James, James, you touched on it earlier. I mean, once you get past the first 15 minutes for, you know, for the setup and Hans Gruber's team comes rolling in to take over Nakatomi Plaza, it's action all the way to the end there. And that's why I'm giving it 10 yippee motherfuckers, because <laughs> I love movies like that. If it keeps my interest and not just keeps interest, it's like, oh, shit. And you're like, yeah, action all the way through it. Like for action, like I said, when you think of an action movie, Die Hard pops up in your head. It's like. And I didn't see this in a, for a while, and I enjoyed it. Right now, I watched it. I was like, "Damn, this is cool. I like it." You know, um, all like you said, there's comedy in there. Like uh, you brought up earlier with the Santa Claus, I got a machine gun now. You know that that makes you laugh. You're like, "Oh shit!" You taunting them, and the shit, and the talkie talking to the other cops, telling them to basically shut the fuck up, put the other guy back yeah. on. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a fun movie all the way around. And another thing that I I think Lethal Weapon came in after. That's another one that it was like kind of oh, like a yeah. diehard ripoff, kind of, you know? Lethal Weapon was the year before. Oh, wow. Oh, see, okay. you see, when I think action, I think Die Hard over that. I thought yeah. Die Hard was first. <laughs> there, there's, yeah, it's it's interesting because like the Lethal Weapon stuff, you can feel right, like the, the culture change. Because like I it isn't Lethal Weapon also kind of like a Christmas movie? Like it takes place. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I don't I don't remember. Because I, I think it is because like he has a thing for that. The the writer, Shane Black, like almost every movie he writes, like half of them are it has something to do with Christmas and like basically yeah. being depressed on Christmas, pretty much. Yeah. Um but yeah, that the Lethal Weapon stuff, because I feel like the what makes Lethal Weapon really work is like it's really funny. Right. Like the stuff is really funny and it's really kind of edgy stuff too. like the jokes, like, you know, there's a whole thing at the beginning is trying to kill himself. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then then later on, he like him and this other guy jump off the roof. He like he like cuffs the guy and then they both jump or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's very edgy. I mean, yeah, they definitely tried to play up the comedy more. Yeah. Than Die Hard for sure. Yeah. Die Hard is just like fucking it's, one guy there's explosions yeah it's it's just and ramping it's got it up a, to an 11 yeah and it's got enough comedic just enough comedic dialogue to not take you out of the action and not make it feel corny yeah. and even the scenes where there's no you know big action stuff going on and it's focused on Hans Gruber and his plot uh, I mean, it was such great casting and he plays the role so well that you're interested in what he's yeah. saying and what he's planning and it keeps moving the story along yeah. Yeah, and like yeah, I said, I, I like the scene where when he was putting the freaking holes around his waist and he was talking to himself, like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I thought that was yeah. great because that's like something like I would do if I ever in that scenario, like I'm not doing this. What the fuck's wrong? Which one? You don't do this. You're going to sit down here. 
mm-hmm. get in fetal position and pray, you know. But this motherfucker is tiny. He's like, oh, you're doing, Here's Mama, a, why are you doing look this? Look what Aaron's doing over there. You see him yeah. at the top, right? <laughs> get like him. I thought that was funny. I liked how he was talking to us talking shit. I thought it was funny. So there's some, like you said, there's some funny stuff in here. It's just not 100% action serious, you know? And then, like, the limo driver. Limo every driver is funny. Every single scene that he was on made me laugh just about. Aaron's hero. He was. Aaron's hero. <laughs> Probably my favorite character in the movie. Because he kept that, like Chris was saying, that comedic thing to kind of keep you interested, like... Once you once it got to the points of the movies, you're just like, okay, something needs to happen. Then he comes in, he's in a different doing something. Similar. So, I mean, I was reading as I was looking up some, you know, behind the scenes stuff. I, like he's his characters in the book, like, but they, I mean, they included those scene, little scenes of him throughout the movie. Uh, that's new material. I mean, that those scenes weren't like in the book. That was just to kind of keep him in the movie so that people didn't forget about him. Got it. Got well, it. let's go to a serious question here. I forgot to mention earlier. Do you think his wife is in the wrong by not using her real last name? Yes. Where she changed it. He was like, oh, you want to change your, your Mrs. What? Your Miss mm-hmm. What? And he's, she's not going around on Mrs. McCain. I for, If I ever first saw this, I'm like, yo, that bitch is cheating on me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they are divorced, right? I don't... Divorced, they never say they're divorced. There's, there's not enough background separated. into what... Uh, I, I mean... The most you can gather from that story is her career took off and got her this position there. He didn't want to leave New York yeah. because of, you yeah. know, his cop. And that's literally the extent you get of their relationship. Yeah. You don't yeah. know what kind of timetable. You don't know anything that built up to that. It's not a, it's not a real deep dive into anything other than Bruce Willis trying to save the day here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's obvious that it's it's kind of like it's kind of over, basically, between the two of them, yeah. you know. And this this movie leaves it where okay he's kind of like gotten over himself enough to kind of save their marriage. That's where we're left at the end of this movie, basically. But yeah, it it, it seems like when he fucking shows up, it's like she was done with him did for we, whatever reason, you know. We just review and are we reviewing a Christmas romantic movie right now? A nice rom com, yeah. one end? might say, a, ha- a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, it's like it's like a rom com with explosions and terrorists. Yeah, but like you know, it it kind of it kind of is right because like if you think about what's the whole premise of most of these movies, it's like well they can't be together because there's some kind of thing going on, and there's all these things that keep them apart, but at the end they get together. That's what this movie is, except it's terrorists and you know all this other crazy shit and a bank robbery that's keeping <laughs> them apart. <laughs> Instead of you know this this silly bullshit in mm. these other movies, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right with that one. And also, John McClane was going to be named John Ford originally, which yeah. does not uh, sound anywhere near as cool. Does it roll off no. the tongue? No, it doesn't. I like not. John John Ford. John Ford's a good name. It's a director's uh, name. McClane works better. I agree. Yeah, McClane just sounds a lot McClane, better. Yeah. A lot well, I like I like when so we're getting to the later movies when Samuel Jackson when they're together and he's just like screaming McClane and they're like driving over shit. Yeah, <laughs> there there's some great scenes of the two. Of, there's some great fucking scenes. Yeah, of the two of them. I'm surprised they never tried to just like do another with the two of them together. Yeah, with Samuel buddy, Jackson and buddy and, cop movie. No, no, just like another Die Hard movie. Just get those two characters together again. Like, it's... but wasn't Samuel Jackson? He wasn't a cop, though, wasn't he? Uh... No, he was just a dude. He was just a yeah, dude. He was just a dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, just, just a dude off the street, like in Brooklyn. Yeah. It was just, just a, he's just Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. He had like a suitcase and shit, though. Like, he just gets stuck into the whole mess. He got, he literally, but it makes sense, right? When you think about like Die Hard is about uh, just a cop, he's just a New York cop. Yeah. Who gets sucked into fighting these really out there terrorists, and it's like he's just some dude in like Brooklyn or whatever. That that whole thing is so funny too. Like what they made him do, yeah. <laughs> what the terrorists made him do. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it for Aaron. He's got to see. Oh that yeah, movie. you never seen that. You gotta see those ones. He's never seen that. He's got to see that. That shit is so good. Yeah, that's definitely the second best movie in this series. Um, part two or three? Part three. Part three. Yeah, that was that was really the first good. Die Hard movie I saw. It's really what was part? Good, what was yeah. part two? Is it like uh, Han's brother? Han's for Revenge? I don't know. Well, three is three is 
the brother. But oh, two, that's the brother. Okay. Two is something else, but it's Die Hard on a plane, literally. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's true. <laughs> like they, they, you know, rip themselves off. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. No, yeah, no one. Re- what's uh, what's Hans's brother's name? I don't remember. I totally forgot to. Jeremy Irons. Was he was he the uh, was he the actor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No one remembers the other Gruber. <laughs> no. Nope. I uh, Jan, Jan Gruber. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably something, something similar. Jan and Hans. Well, let me look Forgot about him already. <laughs> but but just think about like all these like late '80s action movies. Like Predator came out in '87. Yeah. So did Lethal Weapon, and then in '88, this came out. Like holy shit! Yeah, Talk about 80. just like totally changing. Yeah, '80s the genre like, and like fuck yeah. Everybody thinks 80s is just a horror, but action movies hit a peak in the 80s. Like a I think lot of good ones. Hit a peak in general. Yeah, you're right. I agree. 80s is like good movies. Even the rom coms. <laughs> oh, Simon Gruber. Simon. Simon. Ah. Yeah, he was playing like Simon Says. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You yeah, see? Go to this block at this telephone. Yeah. Yeah. The, it and was then giving him too. puzzles and riddles and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. That was a good one. That's right. Now it's coming back to me. I, yeah. seen, uh, I should watch that this week. You got a lot yeah. of free time. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen this franchise. Yeah. It's been a long time. Hard to believe Bruce Willis actually turned the role down at first. Mm. He almost fucked up his career. Yeah. Well, like, he was uh, filming his TV show at the time. Contractually, he couldn't you, you know the film thing, Die Hard. And that's the thing. Back then, it's like you get a TV show and they can cancel yeah. so easily. You don't want to fuck that up. You don't want to piss anybody off there. Yeah, It's yeah, also steady it, money, too. Yeah, yeah, and especially in the 80s, I think it was probably easier to... Uh, well, because there wasn't as many things go- as there are today. But if you had a show that got even picked up once, you were probably set for quite some time. Yeah. It's harder to get a show canceled probably back in the 80s than it is now. But yeah, he was filming Moonlighting with Sybil Shepard nice. there. And then Sybil so, Shepard got pregnant that. at the right time with, and they had to stop filming the show. So that gave him time to film the movie. That's when he calls like, I'm good. They're like, okay, we'll give you so, a million. <laughs> thank God you got knocked up. There's yeah. yeah, you can call that kid the diehard baby. If that baby didn't exist. There'd be no... They should call that baby John McClain. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I should have looked yeah. up what the baby's name is. That would have been the perfect tribute. Yeah, I'm shocked he didn't name none of his kids John McClain. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That'd be cool. Well, his last name is Willis. John. Well, no, I'm just saying, like you know, like John had like a John McClain Willis. Yeah. He got. He married Demi Moore. Right? He's Demi Moore. Yep. Uh, it's their kids. Yeah. Yeah. He has, a he has a daughter or a couple, two daughters or something like that. Man, she whoa, she was like she was really in something in like the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! But yeah, man, it's uh yeah, it's Rummer all around great action hell? Christmas movie. They named their kid Rummer. Rumor Willis. Yep. Rumor. What the fuck? What? What yeah. is? What is? What? That, that's some caucasity, right, Aaron? It is. It is. <laughs> no, no, I'm going. To- it's celebrity, rich people. Dude, that is more of a celebrity thing than just yes, a white person. Like thing. like naming your baby Apple. Well, like, I think I think fuck? I think black people have their own thing, like the destiny spelled the black way. There's definitely a black way to spell things. Which or Kanye West, who named his kid Northwest. That's for just fucking yeah. stupid. Well, I, I think at least that's kinda like, that kid is gonna get picked on for sure. Oh yeah, totally. Oh uh, well. Probably not. They're going to be well, well, oh, no, he'll be. Yeah, he yeah, won't have, to, he won't have a, any trouble. Here's the difference. So black people will take and they'll create a new name. <laughs> White people <laughs> is when they're given birth and when the mother is screaming in pain. Is whatever, on the right, is whatever on the right side next to her. It could I be a, a balloon, an apple. Yeah. A flower. Yeah. That's how they. It's a real object. That's what we name the kids. Tabletop. Look. Fucking rumor, yeah, Willis. That, Jesus I found Christ! Chair and eat your cereal. Yeah. <laughs> Name your kid cereal. Name him Frosted Flakes. 
or like or like you name him like Tony Tiger. Tony like, like, Tiger. Yeah. Like you name him after the fucking mascot. <laughs> to can't like like to can Sam Willis or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rolls right off the tongue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are here is when we go off on a tangent. I don't remember what the fir- I don't remember what the original question was if there was one. Continue. <laughs> no idea. I just I just got sucked into these crazy. Oh, I thought these, I thought you said you're going to go on a tangent, but then you're like, yeah, continue. That's what I heard. No, I was no, like, no. "Where's your tangent? What happened?" No, no, the tangent, the previous tangent that we were doing. Mm. We do that every week. Also. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we all it, it can't, can't help it. We're supposed to. Shit, it's all right. It's our party. Like, we cry if we want to. <laughs> well, yeah, man, this is a big movie at a big time. Yes. Led to a lot of uh, a lot of cultural stuff. Yeah. I will say this though about this movie: this movie came out at the right time. Because it wouldn't have worked if it came out today. It wouldn't have worked. Because, I mean, but then again, I guess you could say with a lot of those movies that came out, let's just say they did for shits and giggles. We would have been saying this This is just like every other fucking movie we just seen. They just threw well, it. Like I said, they did do it. Skyscraper. <laughs> it came out, Skyscraper, or The Rock. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not a great movie. <laughs> I didn't see it. And the only scene from the trailer I remember is a man... It, uh, Dwayne Johnson, of course, has one fake leg, and somehow he's running on this beam to jump fifty yards to catch, you know, onto the side of the skyscraper. Yeah, I don't think anybody, even if you're the Rock, can run with one human leg and make this jump. Mm-mm. Yeah, the movie, the movie is ridiculous. But that movie, yeah, that movie was just made to appease, like, because they shot it in China, and there's a bunch of Chinese people who pay, play the gangsters, and then mm-hmm. it's him and. It's his, yeah, it's him and his like white family, <laughs> and then and then like they're in China, and then you know the fucking terrorists come, and it's yeah, it's like it's not it's not anywhere near this this film. Speaking the- of skyscrapers, <laughs> is it just me the the building of the the Japanese building for this movie? I forgot. Akatomi Plaza. If you take out the black center, it looks like the twin towers. You sure? <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They put. They had to throw in a little bit of New York in there for uh, Mr. McLean. <laughs> Is The Rock a good actor, guys? Be honest. I, th- I think he's decent. A good actor? Yeah. Jumanji was funny. I I I think that he does. So here's the thing about the. So I don't even think that like Arnold Schwarzenegger is not a good actor to me. No. But he does his thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and the thing like when he does it in the right way, it works. So if you give him the right character or the right type of thing, but he's always doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. And to me, it's the same with the rock, but that stuff can be really good. Like that's, he can do the rock thing really well, mm. but I, so the best, the best I've ever seen him act was it was, uh, I think it's pain and gain is the name of the movie. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah that, I haven't seen that where he's playing this guy. Who's like basically an ex con. Who's like super, like he is a, he's a coked out, straight up fiend and i think he actually plays it's funny but he plays the comedy and like the the reality of this dude who's like a super fiend really well that's the best i've ever seen him act is no, he wasn't where, being himself is that the one with mark Wahlberg in it too? yeah marky Amazing. mark's in it um anthony mackie's in it that's right. that movie's really fucking funny that movie to me was like i i saw that movie when it came out with like some co-workers and like i was fucking dying laughing like there's some scenes like there's a scene where it's just about these guys who go around robbing people in Florida. It's it's a floor. It's basically a Florida man. The movie. Doesn't he uh, play dumbish too? Isn't he like a dumb cokehead? Yeah, he's hella dumb. So like, okay, yeah. so they, they they do this. They do a robbery where they steal money from this guy, and then they then they need more money because you know the one guy, the rocks, like snorting it up. Uh, Marky Mark bought a massive house, and like Anthony Mackie. He's been taking steroids so he can't get an erection. So he's paying for all these injections <laughs> in his dick so he can get a boner. So then they do another robbery where they uh, they like murder this porn star and this this porn producer and his wife. So they murder the wife and then they're trying to dispose of the body. And there's this great scene where like the rock is is so they tell the rock, okay, get rid of the body. Just just do something to get rid of it. So they find this motherfucker later and he's in the front yard grilling this person's like arms and legs on a fucking barbecue <laughs> to uh. get rid of the evidence. It's one of the and like that actually happened in real life. Like the person really did grill this person's body parts 
on a fucking barbecue in Florida <laughs> in the 90s <laughs> to get rid of the evidence. <laughs> there you go. Maybe we'll put pain and gain on the list. You're not you're not wrong about the rock though. In the right situation, he can be really great. But in those other situations, he's that I he's developed the personality that just so many people love that yes. they'll yeah. watch whatever he's in really for any yeah. reason. Yeah. If for example, Two Fairy. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you have a kid <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Oh my god, it's hilarious. Now I watched a few movies. The movie itself is decent, but like you said, the rock is the rock. It's like the same yeah. humor. Action. Same funny. yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. But uh yeah, there's a few movies I didn't mind. Like like I said, Jumanji. Those were funny. Jumanji's good. Yeah, those are funny. He's funny with Kevin Hart. He 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 I think he does roles for the most part, because I haven't seen everything that he's done. But he does those type of roles that he knows he can be very successful at. And it's just like, listen, I only have to say a couple lines in this role right here. Fucking slam somebody, shoot a gun, <laughs> do something funny. Say something. <laughs> I got that. Then, then he does the uh, San Andreas Fault. That movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he does that. He's been getting into those type of movies. Like just he's big ass summer based, blockbuster yeah. action movies. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 he's big. He's, he's, a, he's like. He's basically like the level Arnold Schwarzenegger was at at his. Oh life. yeah, he's he's yeah. just a monster. Would you say he's bigger because of times like times now? It's easier for us to watch for anybody around the world to watch a movie than it was in the eighties. I, I don't think he's bigger. I think Schwarz- So the thing about Schwarzenegger is like I, I think they're they're pretty comparable, right? Because Schwarzenegger he did the Mr. Universe stuff, and he was big for the Mr. Universe stuff before even really the film stuff came, and then the film career just blew him up even bigger. Like once he really did Terminator. And you know, Predator and Commando and all those other '80s movies. Mm-hmm. Then he just got and what was the other one he did? Was it Masters of the Universe? Yes. Yeah. Oh was that one? wow! Oh, yeah, He Man. Yeah, He Man. Yeah, Masters of the Universe. Like all that stuff just like made him big, big, big. And it's really comparable because like you know, with The Rock, like this dude started in the fucking remember that the Scorpion King and that shit <laughs> that was fucking cringy and terrible. Yeah. And now he's in these like legitimate action blockbuster, but it, you know it all started because he's just like a huge wrestler, yeah. just one of the absolute biggest wrestlers of all time. Yeah. Um, Highest yeah. grossing actor the last few years. Yeah, yeah, can't be mad at him. I mean, shit, he's out there. That's money. You take control. it. Oh, yeah, you take everything they offer. Why not? I think he has. I think he has the largest social media following of any person. Oh, I'm sure. It wouldn't like, surprise me. He's yeah. one of those guys where like. Uh, obviously all the females love him and then all of his guys were fans of him from back when he was a wrestler so then you're just like oh shit look what he's doing now and you just watch the shit just because the rock's in it yeah the rock's in it yeah the rock's in it yeah he basically did drop the rock though it's dwayne johnson before like then he like in the movie it said dwayne the rock johnson yeah and a lot of the films like when he first started then he was like yo we're getting rid of the rock shit (laughs) yeah wwe wwe now owned like certain things that he was in or own like a piece of it and they own the rock, the name, the name, the rock. Oh, they still do. That's why he goes there. So they they own him for life, basically. Man, Vince, Vince, man, what a what a what a fucking guy. Yeah. This dude just like right. This dude just like owns all this shit. <laughs> a lot of lot of wrestlers. it's like signing a deal with the devil when you when you like yeah. get in bed there, with Vince. McMahon. There's this Yo, dude man. Ryback. He went. He won. But uh, feed me more Ryback. His name and his saying. He finally won. It took years. Oh my god. Yeah, he's the one he said it. feed me more. Yeah, he created his song and everything. He was like, feed me more. He said, because he's a big muscle dude. And he, and he says, feed me. Like, he'll beat someone. He goes, that's not enough. I'm still hungry. Feed me more. Vince tried to, nope, that's ours. Because you said in WWE is mine. But he created it. But he finally won. He got it. It's his It's his brand. Wow. So, Should be. Yeah. They, it's hard. Uh, it costs a lot of money to do it, though. To get yeah. It. McMahon was uh, just the stories you hear about how screwed these how messed up these contracts are for these wrestlers when they first come in mm-hmm. it's like you Dude, you, yeah. sign, you sign your life away you're done yeah. Under- it's, it's a deal with the devil man like he yeah. is absolutely just the devil and he 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 takes he takes his piece of you <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. you got you to think about it right like say, say back, especially back in the 80s Vince Rain comes up to you it's like here's a hundred thousand dollars come sign with the WWF and this is gonna be your gimmick. This is gonna be your name. Blah blah blah. And say you're one of the, say you're one of those guys that actually hit, and you just explode. 
but you sign that contract because you're making more money to take care of yourself and your family. But then you hit and explode, then you didn't read the fine print. Yeah, I own everything. I own your yeah, everybody. He owns like, Hulk Hogan. But he also he also kind of played favorites too, because like with, with Stone Cold, like he he paid that dude some money in the nineties. Yeah. During the Attitude Era, like he oh, I'm sure fucking he... put ducats in his, that dude's pocket. Yeah, but how much did he make off of them? <laughs> he made oh, he man, made ten more. times as much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way more. But still, if you're if you're Stone Cold, right, and you're making fifteen million or whatever a year mm-hmm. as a wrestler, when everyone else ain't making shit, great yeah. point. Right? They in the nineties, they weren't. He yeah. was like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, that, that is a great point. But I'm just thinking of it now on the other end of yeah. it, where it's like they own your likeness. You're like they can put you in a video game, put you in this, put you in this. Hey, yep. hey we need to use your likeness and your name in this commercial and your catchphrase. Go ahead and do it. We're, we're going to give you a little bit of pocket change, but you know we own your name and all this that for the next thirty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, someone was talking recently um, about so they did they did a show in Saudi Arabia, like. I was like a year ago or two years ago or something. And this dude we were talking about, he's like, yeah, I'll only refer to that as WWE blood money. <laughs> because <laughs> they do that. like it's and, and Vince said, you were going to do the show in Saudi. Yeah. Because they're going to pay us 50 or 80 million or whatever to go do a show there. And they got like, they did this, this one, this one match. It was uh undertaker versus um, oh, fuck. What was it? It was undertaker versus, I forget who it was, but it was two like really old guys. Yeah, basically. And the guy Undertaker was fighting. He he uh he basically missed a spear, and he he oh. smashed his head into a pole. Goldberg. Bill yeah, Goldberg. Goldberg. Yeah, Goldberg. <laughs> so you got these two like they're what? They're in their late like mid forties. Forties, fifties. They're in their mid forties or fifties. Undertaker's 50s. old. Yeah, old and they're like fighting, 50s. and like and the the mo- the match got totally botched. And it's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm giving Get paid. that money. Get the yeah. Get that money. <laughs> Buyer beware. Yeah. Hell yeah. Vince Vix McMahon is just like he's an evil, evil genius. You gotta give him his credit. Yeah. yeah. Because of that successful Absolutely. business. But the whole the whole the whole family. The whole family. <laughs> you know. And it's like it's like the fucking mafia, man. Basically. Cause you gotta basically kind of marry into them <laughs> to be a made guy, right? Because isn't that what Triple H did? That, that was just yeah. gonna say, yeah. He yeah. fucking married into the family, and so then he's a made guy. <laughs> oh, he, he played smart. He did that shit. <laughs> oh shit! Did you guys? Any of you guys seen that movie, Fighting with My Family? Speaking of wrestling and wrestling is that, movies, is that what Paige? Uh, I forget what it's about. Have you Have you heard of it? It was like The Rock. Was uh, the it? rock, yeah, the rock. I, I think it's about Paige. I think yeah, the Paige and her. Yeah, the, the British one, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I have not seen that. The one who had a porn. Really, I didn't know viral. that. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't talk about that in the movie. No. Oh well. They didn't talk about that. Uh, a, a, a sex tape leaked of her or something. Um. Yeah, it's a pre- it's a pretty cool movie about you know like someone tr- what it's like actually trying to get into. Yeah. The well, her, WWE. Her, her mother started off European wrestling. Then yeah, I think it was like their whole family. Their whole yeah, family. Yeah, whole family got into it. Yeah. Um, and actually, the guy who wrote it was like, he's another. He's an actor now, but he was the brother of the other family members. Um, and they all made this, the the story made the script. It's really interesting. And then um, I forget what her name. Is. She's she's like she's blown up now. Uh, the actress. She's like gonna be in the Black Widow movie as the new Black Widow. Florence Pugh. Yep. Oh. Pews in it, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty solid movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's like, you know, really talking about like what it's like to try and in today's world get into the wrestling business. And it's yeah, it's not it's not just like you show up and you're at the Rock. It's like you got to grind and you got to fight oh, yeah, with man. a bunch of people. And it's like you and you know, massive de- or in her case, is her and like ten models. <laughs> Who, yeah. you know they're they're like trying to like okay here's a model or here's an ex you know like miami dolphins cheerleader and let's turn her into a wrestler because guys are into that or whatever and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they have no fucking clue like how to actually wrestle <laughs> oh, basically they're just divas yeah exactly 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 die cool. hard yeah i think i think uh i think we've we've covered it yeah. 
Yeah. That two hours cool. goes by real quick in a very fun way. It does. Yeah. And fucking again, first time watch for me. I think everybody should definitely watch it. Is it a Christmas movie? Hell fucking yes. You can't argue with that. There's no way you can argue against that at all. So it's a great movie. I we all think you should watch it. And shit, go watch it. <laughs> Seriously, go watch that shit. I'm down. I'm on the same boat. Yeah. It should be watched if you're a fan of action movies in general, a fan of Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. Or even uh even a little uh physical rom com. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get all that. And a little bit. It's got a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. And yeah. Hans Gruber, one of the greatest villains of all time. Yeah, that was a good Professor Snape. Okay, are there, <laughs> are there uh, as I was watching this, why I couldn't think of any uh, where they bring in a supervillain and portray them as anything not or I couldn't think of an American type Hans Gruber. Uh, oh, it's always yeah. like a European. Yeah, it's European, like a German or like um, a super villain Russian, type guy Russian in this kind of scenario. Guy. Yeah, that yeah. is very true. What well, I think the, the, the fourth one. I think the guy was American. Was he? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, so. Well, like in the eighties, I think that's what they played as villains. They always had like a European, like a different yeah. country against the USA. Mm-hmm. USA wins. Yeah, that might be. Fair point. That could be a product of the time as well. You're not yeah. going to portray, probably trying not to portray an American in that scenario. Yeah, because Americans are not terrorists. You know, <laughs> it has to be a different country. They're the terrorists. Mm-hmm. They, I think they even said that a couple times. They said uh, they they mentioned something of a uh, like a foreign, like I don't know if it was a cop or someone else. Oh uh, wait, yeah, when Bruce or. Er- Bruce Willis was given his description of to Reginald Vell Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Carl. Yeah. Mentioned they were like Eastern European or something like that. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, I, th- I think in the 90s, it that kind of shifted a little bit. Because if you think of like something like Face Off or whatever. Yeah. Stuff like that, where it's like two crazy <laughs> Americans fighting or whatever. Yeah, do, yeah. Or even like Speed. Like we talked about Speed. Speed's like. That was just some dude, basically. There's mm. fucked up Americans too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of serial killers. Oh, good one is yeah, another good one is like Leon the Professional, where he's like a French guy, and the bad guy's like a New York cop, pretty much. Yeah. There's a twist on things for us. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Hmm. Or The Rock. Yeah, The Rock's another good example. Um you fight off all American, all American. Uh, well, those are <laughs> those are Marines. They turn mm-hmm. Marines into terrorists. Yeah, Rock played a lot of like coming back from the army type shit movies, like his first movies, where something like he was in the military and came back home. That's pretty mm-hmm. much fucking Fast and the Furious is now some sort of military. Yeah, fuck that shit, dude. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what you would call Fast and Furious now. It's, it's. I feel like after that fifth movie, it, it morphed into like. Power Rangers kind of shit, you know, just some yeah. crazy Ridiculous. superhero. Mm-hmm. Morphin time. Um, yeah. It's morphin time. Yeah, it's morphin time. And then they get in the cars and the cars are flying and all this other crazy shit. Hey, man, isn't the, I think the next one goes to space. One of the last two. Yeah, I think it's the one after this one. Because, like, in the one, did you, you guys have seen the trailer for the newest one, right? I don't, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, there there was this one scene where they, 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 they jump a car off a cliff, and but then they, like, they, like, shoot, um, they do something where it's like tethered, so they go off a cliff, but it's tethered, and then they like the car's flying on the tether to hit oh. like to hit like a plane or some shit. Like that. <laughs> yeah, for real, like uh, like one hundred percent. This just goes back to my uh, my theory that Vin Diesel can't get an acting job where he doesn't have to write, produce, or finance the movie. I agree with that, but I'll say this right here though: that scene you were just describing. For the 80s, fucking perfect. Holy shit, how'd they do that? <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. Now it's just like, yo, we've seen this in the 80s. It was dope. Dude. It's trash now. But it's not even a real car. Like, you look at the shit and it's a fake-ass car. It's not, it's a CGI car. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not Vin Diesel. It's some bald white dude it's sitting in the car. It's not uh, the other, the Mexican girl. It's not her either. It's it's none of it's real. Nothing is real. It's all fake. 
It's all <laughs> green. It's a fucking green room in, you know, Burbank. Like somebody, somebody real. with a toy helicopter and a matchbox. <laughs> even, even the toy helicopter, like miniatures can look really cool oh, yeah, and real. Yeah. You know, if you do miniatures right that but miniatures is a step above the green room in Burbank, I'd say. Because <laughs> that's what uh-huh. you're getting with these with these uh, Fast and Furious mm. movies. I can't do it. I can't watch them. But they yeah, just I don't know why, how it happened. How they just morphed into like superhero movies. It's like what? Because that's what was selling at the time. You got to think of big explosions, something kind of heroish, and then they have the rock in it. Again, guys and girls love them for different reasons. So you're gonna check it out at least once, so that you got it all. And then he's he's like a he's one of those stars where honestly, from children up to older people, like are a fan of The Rock, either because of his wrestling or because of the movies he's in now. I think that's a big reason why he's so successful now. If you think about it, I can get rid of yeah. Fast and Furious though. So. Kudos to him, man, for building yeah. a persona that just everybody loves. I mean, he. Everything you never hear anything bad about the rock. Every time you no. hear a st- rock pop up in the story, he's the good guy. Yeah, people want him to run for president. Mm-hmm. Like that just dude. That just that just really just makes me think of like Idiocracy, that movie. Yeah, yeah. That uh, Mike Judd movie. Yep. Like like where uh, basically that's what happens. Like the president's a wrestler. What's yeah. what's kind of fucked up? <laughs> what's kind of fucked up though about like that kind of universe is like. The reality is the the wrestler president was the good president, and it should have been just some random dumb fuck guy is yeah. the guy who who fucked everything up. Because mm-hmm. that's reality. Like, like if we got The Rock as the next president, that would be like a move in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like the rock if if it was like the Biden and then the rock, it'd be like, holy shit, thank God. I was afraid yeah. something really bad was gonna happen. <laughs> I would feel I would feel good about The Rock as the next president. <laughs> I don't know about bars pretty low. Yeah, the bar's pretty low these days. Yo, I'm telling you guys, put my name on a ballot. I'll do it. Four <laughs> years. <laughs> Search 30. 2024. Yeah. I'll still be doing this shit though. Yeah. President. Strafe. So you're gonna record your episodes in the Oval Office. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, shit. <laughs> green screen still, but it'll be it'll look doper, you know. Yeah. Like, why Mr. use president? a green screen, man? Just use the yeah. White House as your backdrop. Yeah, they're like, they're like Mr. President, you have to go meet with the leader of China. He's like, not do it. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like, do, do it from the podcast. Rose Garden. <laughs> yeah, back. then maybe finally we'll get all those. The I, well, Aaron did get out some of the ones in the can, so applause to Aaron for <laughs> for that. Really, really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, then finally we'll get the other twenty eight that are in the can. We'll get yeah. spat out. <laughs> What is yeah. yeah, the 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 like what was it like you and James doing three a day or something crazy yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot, man. There's a lot. So paying four hundred dollars four hundred thousand dollars a year? Shit. You can fire me. I'm still gonna get that money for life. I don't care. <laughs> First <laughs> president fired after five minutes in office. We just let him go. Sorry. So what do you think? Final thoughts on Die Hard? Uh, Kaye, motherfucker. That's all I gotta say. Yippee Kaye, motherfucker. And I hate how, like, so they did the fourth one. It was PG 13. Oh. And they couldn't oh, let they, him say motherfucker. Why? Oh, that's they so had him sick. shoot himself when he said motherfucker. Just pathetic, that's cool, man. man. Yeah, it's pathetic. Like, it's you pathetic. know what you're making. Why in the world? Because they wanted that PG 13 money. Yeah. I, I think if they made another one, I think it'll be radar again. Yeah, Has there were be. there have been some commercials. There have been some commercials that come out, and they were kind of like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it would. I feel like it would have to be right. I mean, then again, it should be rated because a lot of our PG thirteen movies can have a lot of swear. Like, they can have swearing and action. They can have any nudity, which I know they did show titties in this movie. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> you take away that, and boom, it could be a PG thirteen movie with our standards now. See, the thing is with this movie, you didn't need that. There was like no scenario where that would have happened, except for. When he first got there, he's in the hotel room with his wife. But did it hurt the movie? No. See? That's all. <laughs> well, I'm saying you don't need it. It wouldn't hurt the movie. It wouldn't make the movie better if it oh, had the boobs. That, that would be like my job. Like if I was working for movies, that would be like my line to throwing titties in a movie. It makes no sense. Like, but, but, and then that would be my, but will it hurt the movie? No? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> just ran, it'll be a random girl just flashing tits. I thought you were going to write a scene, a different scene this time. 
guys, next time. <laughs> so your job title is the titty guy, and yeah. they just ask you if bare breasts will help to improve or worsen yeah. the movie? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't hurt the movie. <laughs> He's like, how's this scene, Aaron? He goes, hmm, in these boobs. <laughs> he jumps off the roof when it's exploding. Needs tits. He needs, he needs some tits. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's like movies. I like them. But Those no, gr- cool. great movie. Yeah, it really was. Real fun. Yeah, my uh my rating stays the same. The ten yippee kaye motherfuckers. Same mm-hmm. here. I'm glad yeah. uh guys brought this up to watch it because now I'm glad I've seen it again. It's been so long. Yeah. Oh. I was gonna watch it uh I've only watched it the last few years. Before that I haven't watched it since I was a teenager. But I mean, this is another movie that holds up, you know. Like any other great movie does, and like I said, it set off. It found its place in culture, and that everything was compared to this. This was a benchmark in the action movie yes. landscape. Yes, I and I mean, <laughs> and it's funny when you judge new movies compared to Die Hard. If you can remember the new movies that are supposed to be the knockoffs, that's how you know those are good going now too. Yeah, yeah. Die Hard was one of those that just, you're just like, holy shit, a lot of movies came from it. And hey, hats off to it. It's a great fucking movie. Great fucking movie. Go watch it. That's all I got to say about it. <laughs> That's all I got to say about Die Hard, people. Okay, motherfucker. A fun ride all around. Yes, it was. So I guess everybody can drop your plugs. I'll go last. So whoever wants to go first, take it away. Deep Focus Cinema Podcast. Um, I'm going to be. Uh, dropping a sort of Christmas episode. Well, sort of like we, did, me and uh, Lucian, we did another episode of our top 100 films of all time. We recorded it before, but I'm going to drop it in the next couple of days. So nice. look forward to that. Only got two more episodes left of that. Awesome. They'll be coming next year. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Stories from a bar. Talking to a lot of uh, local people in the 518, brewers, bar people, people with cool random stories all while having some drinks so be sure to check that out on all podcast platforms and of course popcorn popcorn and pints here mm-hmm. see me on uh popcorn pints of course and uh horror 30 how's it going as you guys can see i'm on popcorn and pints i'm on horror research 30 so 30 is all over the place but um thanks for popping He's, by. he Just- likes to get around <laughs> our network we do this for our network but i do have a quick a quick cool announcement so january 1st will be my three-year anniversary of doing horror research 30 or horror research 30 so what i want i want to try to do a live show on horror research 30 with honestly if either one of you guys can jump on with me around like i say 10 o'clock Saturday, friday night i don't see why not probably and i should be able to do it just random horror. Yeah, let's see if i can do it or perfect Random horror stuff. Oh, oh, just random talking. Celebration. No yeah. review. Just just random talking. Huh? Just having a good old time. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Having a good old time. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's what's going. So I'm. Are you, going, are you going to make a collage of your uh, a recap of, of your years? That's way too much work. I'm just <laughs> my, my Z Network, James. Don't get so you're three here. you're three years in January. I think uh, I'll be three years in April. Nice. Yeah, January first, I got my very first episode. Nice. Trying to make an episode come out January first all the time, so it'll be a live one. So let's go. Cool. Exciting. But yeah, this was a fun. This was a fun one. I can't wait to do another shitty movie again. And we should definitely talk this week about our list, and then check out some, check out a couple randomizer things, see which one works the best. I'll uh I got a lot of free time. I'll probably play with some randomizer things tomorrow. But let's start putting together a list of like ten movies. Okay. You know, seven we think will be we enjoy, three to really kind of fuck things up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'll get some fuckery. <laughs> <laughs> Random stuff. Even if you haven't seen it yet and it's just a, one of those name movies that you think would be fun to check out. Because I've got some ideas for those. Now, two. Is it from any era? Any era. Okay. Okay. Are we, are my, we, I might d- stay just for for the show. <laughs> I might stay away from horror movies. 
Oh yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. We have horror with Sir Sarah. We can always jump. Yeah, in. exactly. That's why I because I didn't want because I watch a lot of horror. That's why. Well, let's but was, for the show's sake, let's stick away. Let's stick away from horror because yeah. we can easily. Sounds, me, sounds good. Pick horror movie, anything. Sounds good to me. I already have like a couple that are going to be on top of my list. I can think of the top of my head. I have. I should be on there. One right now on the top of my list or on my list. I'm not going to say it, of course. I've got two or three in my head right now. So my head right now, and I'm going to really think about it. Now, oh, this- Duke, do we do we get to like so like are choosing things that other people hate off limits or is that on limits? No, that's on that, uh, on limits. That's on. Oh, oh you mean it, it, as as all of us. Us. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Okay, that you, could be that could be one of the three movies or so where you're like oh, you yeah. just kind of want to fuck things up. Or it could be what, three of the three. But what about the movie I really love, but one you guys hate? Doesn't matter. Fine. Does, does that go That's in the fine. fuckery one? No. Yeah. <laughs> if you're doing it intentionally, yes. <laughs> All right. Like if I put in a Nick Cage movie just for Aaron, that's a that's a yeah. fucker. That sounds, that sounds fun, right? Well, what if it's a Nick Cage movie that you will you like or you think it's like terrible but in a good way how about that okay i'll tell you the nicholas cage movies that i enjoyed i enjoyed <laughs> off and i enjoyed going in 60 seconds okay i don't know if i still enjoy them uh, and face off probably so but going in 60 seconds we'll see so anything other than those two everything yeah. else is you should choose anything else as far as i know i'll find one we'll, we'll watch ghost rider oh, oh fuck <laughs> You just want to punish yourself. <laughs> it's on Netflix, man. It's on Netflix, man. There you go. There's a lot I could do it worse. I'll say Ghost Rider 2. I hate that one even more. Neither one. But, no, I'll think of a list. We'll get it I should have, I'll definitely have it done for next episode. When do you guys want it for the generator? Before or Saturday, of course. Right? For, it's so. possible. So we want to... Let's try and get our list together tomorrow. Okay. Actually, yeah, it shouldn't take too long to get a list together. Yeah. And then uh, whoever goes and enters these in the generator. I mean, if we, if, you know, three or four of us are hitting the same movies in our list, we'll have to switch have up. some backups on hand just in case as well. Yeah, Can we up. submit it into the uh, popcorn points Gmail? Yeah. Actually, that works. That'd make it easy. That works. Yeah. That'd make it easy for all of us. And we can all see it. See each other's list. Of course, we're going to see each other's list, but we're not going to see what is picked until the live show with you guys. Yeah. That randomized button. Boom. Sounds good to me. Sounds Which is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And I hope we start off. I'm going on record saying this. I hope we start off with a shitty fucking movie just because I like to start things off like that. Oh, and I got an announcement too. I'm in the making of having something created. And uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's uh, done this week for next episode. I can show you. Cool. That wasn't peak. vague at all. <laughs> Yeah, sneak peek. I, I, hopefully, we can see it. I can't look at it. That's going to be fun as hell. And on one of these episodes, I will be eating popcorn, people. I know we're called popcorn and pints. We're always drinking. We're never eating popcorn. You'll never see me eating popcorn. So, yeah, I'm going to do it for the fans. Fuck popcorn. I think it would hurt. <laughs> and with that being said, guys. Very buttery. Yes. <laughs> Movie. Are we going to end it by uh, yelling out oh, hippie, hippie kai motherfuckers? We should. <laughs> I don't know if we'll do it simultaneously, but we could try. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Yippee kai motherfucker. motherfucker. <laughs> we did decent. Peace out, people.